In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. This is what somebody captured on their ring camera in El Paso, Texas. Just, just take a look at this, y'all. All right. I ain't gonna lie, if I caught this on my ring camera, I'm moving instantly, gang. Like, I'd be sick. I ain't gonna lie to you. Cause this ain't no normal alien that I'm used to seeing. But in all serious though, what the hell, gang? Like, what, what, this is, I'm not gonna lie, I would go outside and step on this little shit. Like, what? Nah, I don't know. I'd be too scared. Cause look at his eyes. Like, you don't know what this thing could do. Like, what if it just opened its mouth and it fangs and shit? Just, oh my gosh, what the heck? What is this? I've actually seen that creature's screenshots before a few months ago. To me, it just looks like a mangy creature of some sort. And to be honest, for all I know, it could be an AI generated photo that's not even real, but I do believe it to be a real photo. I just think it's a, a mangy creature. If you have any idea what type of creature that is, leave a comment down below. I think it might be some kind of cat, maybe a squirrel, but I'm leaning more on a cat. You guys, it's two o'clock in the morning and there are birds chirping. Do you guys ever hear birds? Are, is this normal for birds to chirp in the middle of the night? Do you guys hear him? Of course the car is coming now. Guys, what the fuck? That's wild. I'm not gonna say it's something that hasn't happened all the time, but it does seem like more recently this year, uh, within the last month or so actually, when I go outside around four or five o'clock in the morning, there's a lot of birds out there chirping away, more than what I remember hearing a year or so ago. And that's just something you would hear if you're routinely doing something over and over again. You notice those things. It's probably just how nature operates, but it is a little strange. Have any of you noticed anything like that happening around you? Or do you think that it's completely normal and maybe people are just not paying attention and it's just something that has happened all the time? Now in this person's case, two o'clock in the morning is really late at night. It's more realistic in my case when it's four or five o'clock in the morning because there is almost some light shining through the sky. Listen, I'm not trying to start a war between couples all across America. But this is the original patent for toilet paper. And it clearly shows that the toilet paper is being unrolled from the outside. And just in case there's any confusion on that, there's a handful of other diagrams of the toilet paper here as displayed that's in the original patent as well, which is from 1691, mind you. And in case you're interested in reading the accompanying words that were in the patent, here you go. I want no part in your marital disputes or the problems that arise from this information. I'm just doing as I do and trying to share the truth with you all. I am a little curious though as to how these conversations are gonna go amongst your, your loved ones who wholeheartedly are adamant about the toilet paper going the other direction. I didn't really expect it to turn into a toilet paper debate. I didn't know that that's where this video was leading into, but watching it, it's pretty fun to watch because there's a lot of people out there that do debate that. Luckily for me and my wife, we kind of agree on the same thing, the toilet paper being on the outside. Overall, it doesn't necessarily matter to us, but the preference is toilet paper facing out towards the wall, not against the wall. Leave a comment down below. Let's see how many people place their toilet paper like that or against the wall. I'm not just saying this for clickbait reasons, but if you're very sensitive to paranormal and demonic things, you probably don't wanna watch this. I'm gonna share in just a moment a clip, a video clip. You can't see much, but it's the audio that I want you to check out. It's uh, one of the most horrific, scary sounding demonic voices that I've ever heard. I have personally captured demonic voices and growls and moans, but not this long. You're going to hear a creature 
go on for the better part of a minute. This comes out of South Mississippi, close to the Louisiana border. The lady didn't want to give the exact details, but she was staying in a friend's house that had all kinds of paranormal activity. And you're going to hear in the beginning the lady homeowner mention it raining outside. Then shortly after, you're going to hear some of the creepiest growling noises and this creature trying to talk. Check it out. It's raining. I'm pretty certain the audio to that video was slowed down, so it was really low toned and really hard to understand. During video editing, I'll see if I can't maybe speed it up to play its natural sound to get a better hearing of it because it's kind of hard to hear what it says at such a low, slow speed. It also makes it hard to tell what the sound is exactly because someone could just be doing a low growl and if you slow it down like that it could sound exactly like that but if that wasn't somebody hoaxing the video that was a pretty serious growl and if there was nobody else there doing it then that means it either had to be some kind of creature outside of the house or the person was just really hungry <laughs> let's play the video sped up a little bit and see if that sounds any better it's ready, right? Really, they're smarter than Tupper. He steals all their shit. <laughs> really, they're smarter than Tupper. He steals all their shit. I haven't personally watched the video sped up. This is all within the magic of editing. I'm assuming myself has already played the video sped up and maybe I could hear something out of it. I'm not sure, but leave a comment down below on what you think it is. Do you think that it might have been a hoax? Or do you think that that could have been actually some kind of demon talking? Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you for being subscribed and thank you for watching. You know the Michael Jackson Neverland theory? Neverland, no. So no. you know how the whole thing with Michael Jackson, the scandal, like he would take boys to his home and then... Oh, and, and there was a picture of him like this. Yeah, yeah, with a baby. With no, that's his baby. Oh, okay, no, okay. no, no, no. But this was like a whole scandal that Michael Jackson was taking these kids to his house. <laughs> Neverland's kind of like an amusement park. They would just have fun and shit, sleep over at Michael Jackson's house. But what people didn't like was, oh, is he doing that because he's getting like some little pleasure off of it? So it became a whole scandal all oh. over the news. Boom, 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 boom. Everywhere headlines, news, blah, blah. Guess what was happening the exact same time that was happening? What was happening? Jeffrey Epstein's Island. Oh, I think I heard of that. That was the why. first, that was the first time like Jeffrey Epstein's Island was being exposed was during the whole Michael Jackson Neverland scandal. So theory was that he had to bite the bullet for the rest of Hollywood type of shit. So like you'll put all the tension on MJ because the whole world is going to listen about that. And then they don't have to worry about the Jeffrey Epstein Island because them world leaders on Jeffrey Epstein Island. That's a pretty interesting theory. And that would also make sense as to why Michael Jackson may have faked his death because he was literally going under a sort of private witness protection working for Jeffrey Epstein or whoever operates that island. That That's a pretty good theory. I, I like that theory. Whether it's true or not, cannot say, but it kind of makes sense if it all adds up to when Jeffrey Epstein's island was starting to get put on the block. Let me know what you guys think about this. These beings are the reason why some people go missing in Alaska. These are the urchin hawk from Yupik folklore, and you won't believe the real story I'm going to share about them later in the video. The urchin hawk are described as diminutive humanoid creatures. Some stories say they live in underground layers, or even in other dimensions. According to the legends, they like to be left alone, but if you interrupt them while they're hunting or crafting, 
They'll mess with you. Some believe they bring luck, but are likely to also cause mischief for humans, such as using strange sounds to lure people into the wilderness, tying them to a tree, and pelting them with rocks, or taking them away to their otherworldly lairs. And you won't know whether or not they'll return you to our world. Now, in 2008, a hunter was riding his snowmobile miles away from the nearest town when he spotted a young boy sitting in the middle of a marsh. There were no tracks leading to or from this spot, and the boy seemed to be in a kind of trance. The hunter tried to talk to the boy, but he wouldn't say anything. Eventually, he took the boy to the town of Marshall, where he finally snapped back to his senses, saying where he lived and who his family was, but also that he had been taken by mysterious little people and brought into Pilcher Mountain. They eventually let him go and dropped him into the marsh. Now, one of the stranger things the boy said was that when he was in there, he met a girl who had been missing for 40 years and was being kept there for unknown reasons. So, are the urchin hawk real? Let me know what you think in the comments. The real question is, is that story real? Because if that's the case, that's just wild. And reading the comments, there's actually one question in the comments on this video that's a really good point. The comment says, the girl that was missing for 40 years, was she still a girl when they found her? Or was she an aged person? And that's a good question as well. Never record yourself sleeping, this is why. This man was a single father and he was looking after his newborn baby, so of course, bought a baby monitor to be able to monitor his baby through the night. Now every night the baby kept waking him up, screaming all through the night, which I mean is pretty normal for a baby, right? Now one night a group of his friends actually came around and in the morning they said, what was that in the night? You were just waking up screaming randomly. So the man obviously thought, ah, maybe that's what's waking my baby up. So he decided to put it to the test. He got a recording device and put it next to his bed and let it record while he went to sleep that night. When he woke up in the morning, he listened back to the audio device and heard a door slamming in the middle of the night, as well as the baby crying again. But he knew he didn't wake up or wasn't sleepwalking, he would have heard that, right? So the next night he took it to the next level. He got his camera and actually started fully recording it. When he woke up in the morning, he was horrified at what he saw. First of all, over on the baby monitor, he saw that his child just woke up randomly and was standing there on the edge of its cot, just staring up into space, almost looking at something. Before then seeing in his room, the door just slam shut and no one walked through it. He then skipped the tape a bit forwards about 40 minutes or so. His baby was still standing, just staring up into space, but now could see a figure leaning over the cot. I'm not gonna lie, that kind of makes me want to record myself just to see if there's any crazy things happening around me. Or would that be inviting something to happen, you know? I don't know, maybe now I don't want to record myself. How do you guys feel about a situation like that? Would you record yourself sleeping to see if there's anything weird happening around you? Or do you think that might be a little too risky? Or pointless? A man was out for a hike, just enjoying the peacefulness and tranquility of the nature surrounding. He begins to hear something galloping down the path behind him. And he turns around, and to his horror, he sees this. <sighs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> Again, sometimes I go through these videos, I do not watch them all the way through, and it seems like, hey, it might be an actual good video for the channel to react to because the description says deeply disturbing footage from an, the Appalachian Mountains and then I get set up just a little behind the scenes of what I have to go through watching some of these videos I'm sorry it got me though I'm not gonna lie I was expecting to see something crazy not a dog jumping around in a dress y'all the Las Vegas aliens are back in the news and wait till you hear what Tucker said about them but first this is exactly what I saw in my dream a whole freaking squad of UFOs Oh my god, where's daddy? Oh my god, I got goosebumps. Papa, come here, hurry. Ah! Tell Jody and them. What is that? What in the world is that? That's wild. That's exactly what happened in my dream. UFOs everywhere. And now the inside paper and Fox is authenticating the alien video in Las Vegas. And they said they were using cloaking devices. Now listen very carefully to what Tucker Carlson says. It's my personal belief based on a fair amount of evidence that they're not aliens. They've always been here. Um, and, I, and I do think it's virtual. That's, that's my view. So and, and again, it's not provable, but based on... Uh, on the evidence, I think. I'm with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. If the U.S. government has, in fact, 
had contact, direct contact with these beings, whatever they are. I've already told you what I think they are. And has entered into some sort of agreement with them, which is, which is the claim of, of informed people, um, I would say, whether they're right or wrong, I can't say conclusively. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but, but if that is true, I mean, it's a very, very, very heavy thing. Yeah. They're being acted upon at all times. And so there are forces that are not human, that do exist in a spiritual realm of some kind, that we cannot see. How much proof do you need, really? Very interesting. First thing I want to touch up on, though, that guy has some disturbingly black eyes. I don't know if any of you guys noticed that or not, or if maybe that was just me. The second thing is, though, I also like the idea that aliens are not outer space creatures and that they are a creature that's always been on this planet. It really makes sense, and they might not necessarily be advanced humans they could be a different type of species altogether they could be penguin people for all we know and or even a spiritual being and it kind of makes sense that they stay hidden for the most part because we as a species are probably way more violent than what they're capable of either handling or than what they just want to deal with. Because if they're extremely advanced, they could probably do a lot of damage to us with very little effort if they're extremely advanced. But these creatures are not like that. They don't just want to cause harm, you know? I mean, at least that's my theory on them. If they are a creature that's just been on this planet for a very long time, it would make sense that they would stay hidden and maybe speak to only special people of power. Hence, Antarctica. That might be the reason why they are set up in Antarctica because that's where they keep their home base and they can communicate to just certain select people of power. That's a pretty interesting theory that I kind of like. Let me know what you guys think about it. I know there's a lot of people out there that really have a spiritual aspect to it and they think that it's all spiritual and I think that's completely fine because it could be that. I love all the theories surrounding it. So let me know yours. Do you remember the story of the aliens that came to this planet because their atmosphere was dying? What if I told you ours is dying right now and we can't do nothing about it? They said the Anunnaki came here to get gold so they can fix their atmosphere. Remember Antarctica had a volcano that was raining gold? That gold was to fix our atmosphere. These people start using machines to control the weather, to make it rain, make it snow, earthquakes. Once they start doing this, they destroy our atmosphere. These people are using these machines to make it rain in certain places that's not supposed to get rain. They're making it snow in certain places that's not supposed to get snow. They destroy everything. All that modern atomic gold that was coming from Antarctica volcano, it was supposed to fix our atmosphere. And we were supposed to breathe it in so it can fix us. But they found a way to steal the modern atomic gold for their self. These people destroyed the balance and the natural flow of life on this planet. So don't be surprised if we start seeing more storms that we've never seen before. I will say one thing. I do think that we are going to start seeing more and more irregular storms. For some reason, it just seems like the weather is getting more and more strange as each year progresses. And that's kind of one thing that I really look for because I hate bad weather. It's, it's my worst enemy. And it just seems like as time progresses, it just gets worse and worse. And we've, I've been extremely fortunate in a lot of storm situations, so I'm lucky on that one. But there's been some times where I've definitely have taken the bullet. I just don't know if it has anything to do with these modifications that they're doing to the Earth. I want to say it is, because it just seems so unnatural to add these elements to the Earth that does not support those elements naturally, you know? And there's got to be a reason that it's not supporting it naturally, so why modify it? I mean, maybe one day we'll reach a system where we can modify one thing, counter the bad aspect of it, modify it, and everything will be good. But that's going to take many, many thousands of years before that ever happens, and or if that ever happens. But over the history of Earth, supposedly, it's gone through a lot of drastic changes, so bad weather can't be unnatural. Shit's getting weird. Part infinite. These are huge nets, and guess what they're for? These nets are to keep the bees out. And so right now, the trees are setting the crop for mandarins that are going to get harvested next winter. 
and nobody wants seeds in their mandarins. So this variety is W. Mercot, which is a cool variety. That's what they look like. If there's bees that get in there and they get pollen from another citrus into here, it makes a bunch of seeds. And the citrus industry actually sued the apiary industry over this a long time ago. And the result was these big nets. And these are actually fishing nets. But it's really interesting. It's not impressive, really, to see these ginormous nets going over the whole thing and stopping all of the bees from getting in there. And uh, that's how we create seedless mandarin. Me, personally, I think that's weird. I genuinely think that's weird. Like, but there's a market for it. There's people out there that are like, please give us seedless fruits. <laughs> who are all these people that don't want seeds in their fruits? Like, who are y'all? I guess. And I thought, I thought like bees were mad important for the environment. And now y'all are like, nah, bees, you ain't eating shit. It's pretty sad to see them trees covered up like that just specifically to keep the bees from them. I, I don't know, it's really off that we do these types of things, but there is other plants in the world and in the region for bees to consume. It's just a shame because they could definitely be pollinating a lot off of those trees and you would be getting pretty good honey out of it as well. Is our moon even real? And why did it ring like a bell? November 20th, 1969, Apollo 12 crashed part of its lunar module onto the moon's surface. NASA reported the moon rang like a bell for almost an hour. Is it possible the moon is a creation of alien intelligence? Is it a holographic projection? Or is it made from plasma? The moon's origin isn't exactly agreed on by scholars. Some believe it could have been formed from mass ejections of a rapid spinning Earth. Others suggest it was a planetoid captured by Earth's gravity. And the most accepted theory is the giant impact hypothesis where early Earth crashed with a Mars-sized planet and the debris from that formed into our moon. Ultimately, we don't know. Indigenous tribes in North America and Africa, as well as the ancient Romans and Greeks, all had legends and myths about a time before the moon. There are also some odd qualities to our moon. It's too perfect. The distance and size are just right to allow for near perfect eclipses, its orbit is an almost perfect circle, which is rare, and why are all the craters the same depth? Could it be possible that beautiful disaster of a movie, Moonfall, was right? I don't know about the movie Moonfall, I've never personally seen it, I heard it was really bad, but leading back to what I was saying earlier about advanced civilizations that still might remain on this planet, they could have potentially made home base on the moon, or specifically the dark side of the moon, because they just don't want to deal with people. I'm still holding on to that theory, I like it. But that all leads down to if space is real, because it could be potentially fake. But I like to think that space is real. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you enjoyed any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.